see a vision of the future with laser-like technology in the all-new BMW 7 Series. The exception rules. Emira Property Funds maintaining its track record with focused leasing in the office sector, an emphasis on retaining tenants and disposing of non-core properties. It's announced 8.8% growth in distributions per share for its half year to December 2015. And Jeff Jennett, who's CEO of Emira Property Fund, joins me in studio now. Thanks so much, Jeff, for your time today. So you've delivered uh, two market guidance that you offered. And at the top of your release, you highlight your vacancy rate now standing at 4.7% and an especially high tenant retention of 82%. Yes. How much tougher a market is it becoming to actually keep a handle on that? Thanks, Alicia. It's definitely a little bit tougher out there, but we've got a good team. We've got a good leasing team that's out there talking to our tenants. And so we've been very pleased to take our vacancies rate, rate down from 5.1 to 4.9 to now 4.7%. We see that going forward, stabilizing at or around the 5% level. Um, without doubt, it is tougher. But um, it's important to stay close to your tenants. And so because of that, I think that's where we've, we've had good success. How much have you had to compromise? So have you had to compromise on the rental fee you fetch, for example, or are you sufficiently pushing through your contractual es escalations? Fortunately, we can push through our contractual escalations. If I look at our, our um, reversion rates in terms of our, our rentals back to, to market and so on, we're pretty much level. In fact, we are negative 0.1%. But as I say, because we stay close to our tenants, because we've got a low vacancy rate, it's not something that we have to um, uh, give up too easily. The other important part is on the retention side. Our tenant retention is now sitting at just over 82%, and that's a high retention ratio. So I believe that's because we're staying so close to our tenants, mm -hmm. and that will will continue for the near future. So let's hone in on the conversations that you're having with tenants right now. I mean, what are they after at the end of the day within the current economic yeah. environment? Tenants are without doubt after good quality space um, and looking happy to, to uh, retain their, their space to continue leasing from us um, in the three to five year area. There's def they definitely do have um, stresses from their side, mm -hmm. but as a, as, as, a, as a landlord of 146 properties, we know what we're doing and we, we stay close to our tenants. And it's because of that that our, our tenants um, stay with us. Um, and I think the conversations around the, the, the tenants and so on has to do with the economy. And the economy in terms of certain sectors has been tough. We expect it to get a bit tougher, but um, we have a quality portfolio. We have longer term leases. And so with that in mind, we're confident that we will be able to continue to deliver um, similar retention and vacancy rates going forward. Of course, your core portfolio uh, you know, sees you spanning industrial uh, office space and, and retail. Re retail as yes. well. Uh, are there any discerning trends that stand out more so in one sector as opposed to another? I think overall the office market is a bit more under stress than what it is in retail. At the moment on the retail side there's still some stress to come through because of the higher interest rates and the lower personal consumption expenditure coming through. I think from the industrial side again there's stress there because um, on the manufacturing side we're not a manufacturing nature, uh, uh, mm -hmm. nation. But having said that um, I think if I look at EMIRA and I look at our portfolio in that, we're well positioned. We stay close to our tenants, and because we, we focus on the nodes that we know and like, um, we haven't been overly exposed on that side. Yeah. So we, I think we're quietly confident that we should be able to continue the growth rates that we're seeing. Uh, portfolio additions that you've uh, made over the period, because you've acquired properties to the yes. value of 240 million yes. rand, uh, redevelopments have been yeah. fo in focus as well. Is your uh, exposure still going to be primarily across these traditional property sectors? And uh, yes. you know, what's your sense of the demand yeah. you're catering yeah. to right yeah. now? So, so we definitely see our exposure increasing across the, uh, across the, the p spectrum. We see ourselves as a balanced and diversified fund, so we pretty much evenly split between office and retail and then a smaller proportion in industrial. We see us continuing that. Um, if I look at our, our development pipeline, we've got a particularly exciting development pipeline, just over 550 million rand, of which our flagship is our new Knightsbridge development. I'm happy to talk about that in more detail. But um, that, that's, uh, that's EMIRA reinvesting into its portfolio. Yeah. And it's coming out of those reinvestments. The, our acquisitions, we've only acquired 244 million rand, which includes our new Summit Place development in Menlin. Menlin is a fantastic node that, that we know and like. It's just off the, the um, N1 highway at Karsfontein next to, to Menlin Shopping Centre. A great node there, good visibility. 
Um, and so from time to time, these pockets of excellence come up. And, and that's where we're looking to redevelop. Of course, you're always on the search for new opportunities within the market. And when it comes to what you're targeting right now, very interestingly, is I picked up that you're considering non-traditional sectors, which mm -hmm. could include the residential property. Yes. So how cautious do you have to be, you know, venturing into that space right now? Because some would question the timing, given the interest rate cycle that we're in, given the fact that we're anticipating further uh, tax hikes, and all within a very distressed economy that's, uh, uh, you know, looking to more job losses potentially down the line. So Emira has no exposure at this point in time to the residential market. But we do believe that in the long-term side, that could play an important role in our overall balanced and diversified portfolio. Mm -hmm. So to that end, we plan to in invest between 70 and 100 million rand into the residential market with, with, with co-owners and people that know how to manage residential. And coming from that, we will then be in a proper, a proper position a year or so from now where we could then actually reinvest further. We have one or two sites, office sites, that perhaps the best use is maybe residential. Those could be much larger than, than 100 million rand. And so with that in mind, we're starting to dip our toes on the residential side. It's early days from a residential. I appreciate what you're saying in terms of higher interest rates. But again, Emira's approach is always a cautious approach. But we need to know what we're doing, and then we will invest fully. Okay, so let's look at what you're doing in mm. Australia, because mm. Growth Point Properties Australia supporting your mm. distribution growth. You've seen income from that investment increasing by 21.8%. Mm. To what extent has the exchange rate uh, had to do, uh, or you know, prompted what you've seen in terms of performance on that end? And what kind of traction are you making? Okay. Uh, in our, on our investment into Growth Point Australia, uh, we reported a 21% increase in, in distributions. I would say about 80%, 85% of that is the currency depreciation that's happened, and really it's happened in the last three months, um, with a 3.5% underlying growth in distribution per share. We like what, what Growth Point Australia has done for us. It now constitutes 7% of our total assets on an offshore side, and we plan to follow a similar model where we will go and re we invest into offshore REITs in slow and small amounts in terms of 1% or 2 or 3%. We'll take that 7% up to the 10% level over the next 12 to 18 months. But we will, again, we'll be selective in terms of the jurisdictions that we invest into. We don't see ourselves investing directly into foreign ju jurisdictions until we know and understand that, prop that jurisdiction and the properties that are in there. And I think our growth point stake is a good example of how we've done this. We've invested into the listed entity to start off with. Now we're in a position, if we decided, we could then invest directly into Australia, into Australia directly property um, with co-owners. But I think that's the path that we will be taking, taking our 7% up to 10%, cautiously, but knowing that we want to increase our offshore exposure. Well, let's leave it there. Thanks so much, Jeff, for having joined us in studio today. Of Good. course, Jeff Janet is CEO of Emira Property Fund. See a vision of the future with laser-like technology in the all-new BMW 7 Series. The exception rules.